Does the room look a little bit darker to you? What? No. No? I always no, you're you're having some color. work done on your house, haven't you? Well, no, I mean, I think it feels a little bit darker because I've bricked up my door at the minute. And it's really annoying because my side door is where I put all my rubbish. Like, I had my bins next to it. So it's now I've got to go the long way around and it's doing my edit. Oh. Yeah, I know. And it just, and I kept thinking, oh, is the room darker? I don't know. Anyway, it's been it a bit of time. Same to me. It's been a bit well, of time. It's been really hate two weeks. Because, Has there been two um, weeks? Oh, I don't know. The first, like, couple of minutes of this, my recording's been crazy levels, and he's going to really hate that I've changed it all up. So. Is that because I was Oh, shouting? you are a little bit louder now. Cool. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> shall, sh shall we begin with, what should we begin with? So well, why we don't we charge? begin with a bit think, of a shout out to our partners and sponsors, Hamish? <laughs> what? What? That's mad. That's mad. This is mad. We got to, right, right. So we got, we got, right. Let's run through it. Shall I'm just we? trying to give them prime spotlight. No. Like, yeah, this got, is true. Got, uh, let's just do a bit of a stock take of the first half features of Push Point. We've got Gardener's Corner, we've got Home <laughs> News, we've got Wheel of Time, we've got the sponsor segment, we've got the new sponsor segment, and there's a there's a seventh sick thing i can't remember what it is flesh and blood no 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 <laughs> that, no we don't do that anymore <laughs> be ridiculous. no i wow. i don't know i reckon it's, we should do all segments i think we should do the sponsorship first because this is what we should do should we do wheel of time wheel of first, time because that, go. that that goes into <gasps> we don't do that though do we what <laughs> What's that? That's not a thing. <laughs> the, the, the wheel. It's absolutely on one. That sounds like you it's just stop time. Boom. Oh. Wait, how do we do it? You, you you say something, don't you? Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Wheel of Time. Yeah. Right. So, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Oh, okay. So, uh, a huge... Wait, who is it? Huge. Uh, well, congratulations to the winner of six packs. Six packs. Of... of Flesh and Blood, Hamish. Which the set? Flesh and Blood podcast. Bright light. Surely we're done. Surely we're going to be close Maybe to being done. we're done. And it's a different set. But as far as I know, it's still Bright Lights. And, you know, there's some good cards in Bright Lights. There is. It's good expansion, it's good expansion slot cards. And God, it's hard to say expansion slot cards in Bright Lights. And the winner, I push the point patron, winner this week, this two, two weeks, every two weeks. He's the winner. It's none other than Brandon C. Hey, Brandon C. Brandon C. Huge commiserations to Brandon F. But sadly, you are not the winning Brandon this episode of Pushpoint. Well, there you go. But um, Can I just ask the can uh, you? avid listeners at home, when we run out of our current set of bright Ooh. lights packs, for the Patreons, should we mm. give them... What should we give Crucible them? Crucible... Crucible Unlimited. Oh. Or. Or. or Everfest. Oh, there's some good cards in Everfest. Yeah, Everfest so let's, is getting. Have, let's have some comments on the podcast. Uh, or a mix. Oh. Three or three? Three and three? Or three or three? A little three or three. A little expansion. Back when we used to have expansion, expansion sets. Slot. We yeah. don't do that anymore. No, we don't. No more. So, Every set is a draft set, I believe. I, I is, think... that, is that a thing? Yeah. Can't remember. Uh, yeah. Okay. Everything past dust or dawn has been Ooh. sets. Yeah, yeah. So we all we all blast from the past, you know. I reckon Crew's a three, got three promise and of three. plenty. Mm. Great rare. Mm. Oh, whatever. So we'll just pop a comment on the YouTube video. Let me know what you think. The Crew, Patreon and I'll put a um, in with. I'll put a poll. Oh, on the Spotify slash Apple Music episode. Awesome. If I if I remember. Yeah, which, which you... I probably won't. Right. No. <laughs> there you go. Um so why? Why? Why <laughs> six packs? Why do they get this? Well Hamish. Okay, well, if you are a... You know why they get it, Hamish? It's because if you're pitching a push the point, you get six packs every episode. Winner gets six packs. But that's not all they get, Hamish, is it? No, that's not all. They also get 10% off on the Thistle Tavern site, which is a Scottish shingle seller from oh. Aberdeen. Got it right this Aberdeen? time. Aberdeen. Hey, hey Scotland. So, yeah, Thistle Tavern is a Scottish single seller in the UK, and he provides lots of singles to um, all the players that want 
cards from lots of different games from Lorcana, One Piece, Flesh and Blood, even Star Wars Unlimited. So if you're a patron, you get 10% off your online orders. Not only that, you also have Metal Fab Tokens, which is a brilliant um, token um, seller for also different games of Lorcana, Star Wars Unlimited, and especially Flesh and Blood, which yeah. I have some tokens to uh make it a lot easier for the uk and europe to get it at royal mail prices and our brand new partner pcg there's, there's pcg yes. trip do the bit um wow well, patreon cost trip no no that's what i say that yeah <laughs> how, how much does it cost to be a push the point patron it, it's three <laughs> Three pounds. <laughs> no, it's free because if you are a push the point patron, you get a PCG voucher voucher once a quarter at the sum of your um of your pledge. So if you are a three pound uh patron, you get a nine pound voucher to spend once a quarter. If you're a five pound, fifteen pound. I will say it does cap up to fifteen pounds. So if you're a patron, you get a voucher that you can use for submissions for PCG, which they're kindly done a load for me. And you'll be seeing them on the YouTube shorts. There's some wow. really, really spicy ones. Um, yeah, so check it out. So you've got Fizzle Tavern, Metal Fab Tokens, and PCG. You guys are awesome. Yeah, come check out the uh, the Push to Point YouTube to see Hamish's spicy shorts and uh, lots of other great content at the moment. The uh, day one deck techs are doing mm. particularly well. We recommend checking those out. Yeah. Um, what did he put on his shorts to make them spicy? Oh, you don't want to know. So. No, you don't no. want to know. No. What stains has he got all over those? Oh, well, you're going to see. Sriracha. Yeah. Um, you're going to see how coming mint. Coming at you. <laughs> you're going to see how mint my spice is. Let's do some beer. Is it that time? Hamish, what are you drinking? <laughs> yes. Yes. Keep, keep it going, boys. Thank you, yep. Simon. So, <laughs> I have a Crabby's Original. Yay, Ooh. what a what a drink. What a classic. Alcoholic a classic. ginger a surprise. beer. Yeah, yeah. Faye buys them for me now. She actually goes, I bought it for the podcast. She says oh, that's exactly sweet. like that. So, good for the podcast. Good for the podcast. What about you, um... Cool, your mustache of wheel of... Very wheel curly. Of yeah. Wheel of mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Simon... Yeah, it's super curly. What are you drinking? Uh, well, my drink bleeds a little bit into home news, so I'll come back and talk a bit more about it in a bit. But I've brought mine all the way back in my suitcase from Greece. What is it? What, oh, what is a... it? This is Fix beer from uh, the Athens area, I believe. Oh, in Greece. your gosh. Uh, if you're here of... and listening, tell us, oh, is, this, is this the Fosters of Greece? Well, actually, <laughs> this was recommended to me by Yorgos. Uh, I yeah, was. Yeah. It, uh, this is going to happen in home news. I'm going to give Yor Yorgos a massive shout out in home news. So, okay, trip. What you in? Stick on trip. Yeah. Well, stick I on thought trip. I, would, <laughs> I thought I would. It's your joke. You can't laugh at it. Just I know. No, same, but I still think I can't believe that we got that. Anyway, what are you drinking? Well, I thought celebrate. I mean, it's uh, part of the miss fail. Um, I only call it Mist, so I sometimes have to remember what the set's actually called. It's called Part of the Lots of moons mm. and lunar mm. stuff going on. So I got myself a lunar oh. haze. Hey. 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 That's quite nice. That's nice. Yeah, um, so that's what I was thinking. I don't always theme it, but I see a good theme. I'll go for it. I don't so, always theme it, but when you do, you make it a good one. Yeah, there you go. Damn right, Hi, uh, Hamish. Damn right, Simon. Sorry, I get you too confused sometimes. Um, cheers, everybody. Uh, <laughs> cheers. 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 Well, okay. Gardener's Corner. You may have seen on my Twitter that I have made a new planter. I'm actually, yeah. really, I'm actually really proud of this. I, oh, yeah, that's tasty. Yeah. I went to the, um, I went to like, it was like a thrift shop for all sorts of, gar like literal garbage. You know, when it's just like yeah. extra bits like of like, Chop off and the woods. Dump. Yeah, the dump. The like dump, a breakers right? yard type yeah. thing. Yeah, but the guy just buys it off others and then, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I went there, got um, to uh, scaffold a planks. Um, then I went to B&Q, brought a saw, sawed it up, drilled it together, painted it, 
and leveled it out, and now it's sitting what in my garden. Job. Yeah, I know. I'm dead proud. What have you planted in it? Have you put anything in it yet? No. Just literally yeah. chucked the soil in on top of it today. So that's Ooh. my... You look like a lovely blue colour. Is that is that what I saw? No. It's... You painted it? No. Yeah, I did paint it. It's grey. Grey. Oh. Yeah. That's great. Fa- that's... Great. That's what Faye wanted. We've got sunflowers and spearmint growing at the Oh, so we well, got... mint will go mad. So oh, well, mint I know always it went does mad. go mad. Mint will go mad, mate. We said it before. We'll say it again. Mint will go mad. Yeah. Just be careful. Well, There's one tip I want you to one... know, Henry. Yeah. Mint will go mad. <laughs> mint There's will... one thing we've learned from the Push the Point Gardener's <laughs> Corner is that mint will go mad. So just be careful. <laughs> mint will go just... mad. All right, Simon, is there anything you're... Is, is it anything to report? From Gardener's Corner... I have come back from my week-long holiday away to find my garden in fairly decent condition apart from the long lawn, which I need to clear mm. out yeah. for tomorrow. Fair enough. I see it's been raining while I've been away, so I'm pretty pretty happy. It's good for the garden. You don't need rain. You've got your gravity-fed irrigation system. Yeah, just for the raised beds, but everything else in the garden needs a bit of rain. There you go. I know, trip. And how do you think yeah. How do you think I top up the, the water butts? You need the rain. Oh, my God. So, such a green. Right. What about you, Tritt? Well, thank you for asking, Hamish. Um, I think last time on Gardener's Corner, I mentioned that I put my tomato plants outside because I was growing them inside. And they How's were ready to go outside. Point? They're doing great. We got a, we got a, we got a, we got a, we got a tomato. One a tomato. One, <laughs> one tomato. tomato. Already, already. You already. got that for one bag of tomatoes? <laughs> I can see it right now. <laughs> it's right there. I can see it. I can't see it. I'm pretending I can see it for the podcast, but I actually I actually can't see it. Um, but I also we mm. also bought some peppers yesterday Ooh. at the market. Co-op. Very nice. The Wanstead market. The peppers. One lemon pepper. Lemon is like a yellow pepper. And one other hot pepper of some kind. Don't know. Nice. Can't remember. Nice. And the strawberries, guys. The strawberries. All right. That sounds good. It's you know what? I'm, a, I'm actually going to... Put... I'm not even going to continue. No, I'm, I'm done. Strawberries I'm actually bored of Gardener's Corner. Yeah, that's now. it. I'm... That's dumb. Yeah, good. There's uh, a mistake. We should never have brought it up. No, we should never have brought it up. That's my fault. But Let's move it on. Just before we close. Oh, my God. Please don't talk about it. Let's move on oh. to the next segment, which is Home News, I think. Home News. Home News. Home News. Right. Oh, sorry. Fuck. Fuck. Trip. Hamish, what have you been up to? Me in the home, yeah. Uh, bricked but up you'd my... be busy Apart from blocking up your door. Uh, you bricked up your door. I, I've uh, made my fire exit worse. And why have you bricked up your door, Hamish? Making yeah, it, could you explain? Making a downstairs toilet. Ah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not done yet. You know, we're gonna have the fab. So why did you well, brick make... up the door to do? So that? I got a loan. Oh, for... okay. So and I got they're... a loan for the fab den. So now I'm gonna make a fab. Oh. Now I'm gonna make a fab toilet. So, you're gonna, really? Yeah. You're gonna okay. Talashar and the uh Nah nah, I'm gonna viscerai the <laughs> gonna rune gonna make some rune chants while you uh Uh yeah, I'm gonna flush my yeah. chance. I'm gonna flush my chance. <laughs> rune chance with no so, no, doesn't rhyme. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'm making a downstairs toilet. And I went to UK Games okay. Expo. Oh that, how was, was that? Games Expo? That was really good, right? So the flesh and blood stand was stand was stand out. Um, honestly, was I'm not even like trying to like go. Ooh, no. I had to say the best one of it, like the one that was like, yeah, this is pretty nuts. Is the Lorcana one? Like their stand was pretty nuts. But Ravensburg, a little bit of money behind them. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, so Ravensburg had like all of their products on one thing, and then like Lorcana had just had this like huge thing. But mm. like Flesh and Blood, weirdly enough, like I did say to the guys, like, like yours really shined and it literally did shine it had lights and it was all lit up right mm. and no one else did and i was just like this doesn't it's not exactly like crazy hard to do they're just led lights and there's just a pit you know like, i understand the mechanics of it but it was just really really effective and no one else did it and they also had a like a like a roof bit on the top it was like a little like a little arch right and they said if no one would notice, right? But they put all their social media stuff on the top, and mm. no one could see it. And I was like, "Why do they do that?" They said, "Well, because when they do drone shots of the UK yeah. Games Expo and yeah. like 
they they there's people standing on the top and they look down and they will see their socials on top which no one does you just see a load of nothing on the top when they do those drone shots and it was like oh that's clever <laughs> it's like wow this is that's really really, really thought out the I whole run. thing was so thought out and it was shout packed out to, shout out to alex watkins the uh the new lss employee from the end of last year who's yeah in their convention where he he designed the layout and the 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 stand oh. he he doesn't surprise me the dude knows what he's doing he's been doing that with um fantasy flight games with x-wing and um netrunner i assume I, I assume he did all of them but he knows the gig like the convention gig so he knows his stuff he does know his stuff very very well and just to top it all off on the uk games expo it was very good i took my whole family <laughs> faye and logan did have you got have you got escape from the dark sector is that what I can see? Yeah! Hey! Yes! Oh, that's so good. It's a great game. It's, it's super hard. It's amazing. Oh, it's nuts. It's nuts. But yeah, that I picked that up. Me and Faye loved it. And I signed them up to the Blaze event. Right. So, <laughs> Blaze? So I have got my three, co- three copies Whoa. of Blaze. Oh. Blaze, Blaze, Blaze. So, Leveraging like, family. Yeah. So yeah. I signed them all up. And Logan B a five player with mask and momentum, all the gubbins, right? Tunic. And he had a pre-con, that pre-con Riptide deck that Living Realms gave us to do yeah. those reviews. I just grabbed that and said, you use this. I will say he didn't do it on his own. I did sit next to him. But his opponent also, she wasn't um, doing it on her own. Her boyfriend was sitting next to her. So it was me. It was two backseat <laughs> gamers, which I was very happy that, Riptide's pretty good in we so won. far. Yeah, yeah. Because right? yeah. everything, all your stuff's going to get turned on yeah. all yeah, the time. Yeah, they just did right? no blocks. Yeah. Take the shot. Yeah. No blocks. Take a get uh, uh, a frailty token. And then the guy went, Ooh. oh, the frailty token doesn't matter. And I was like, all right. But he went down to one. What? Yeah, don't do that. Don't, he, they did that. Against Riptide. <laughs> they, did, they did do that, yeah. And they went, okay, we're going to pump the next attack. Victory. And I was like, yeah. And then I just leant over to Logan, literally, and went, you've just won. He's like, oh, have I won? And I was like, you wait. And he went, okay, and we'll attack and boulder strap, do one damage. The The attack is above the <laughs> above the base power, so take one damage. And they went, oh, yeah, no, no, you take five. And I went, no, you. we deal one. You're on one health. GG. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, well done and then Logan you... went oh I'd like to play on and I said I'm really sorry but I just dropped you from the tournament <laughs> <laughs> but he did say Brutal. yeah but he did That's say brutal. he did say oh, I only want to play one game and I was like okay and then, well, James, and then our good old boy James Armstrong came over and he went okay and I said I've dropped Faye's dropped I brought Faye a prism deck and the, the, the blitz deck from Monarch and I just put in Luminaris in it because I just had a copy and she said, where's my weapon? Oh, just his Luminaris is broken. And then when she played up in, against Victor, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's literally mm. just a deck full of heralds. <laughs> and she goes, I did nothing to him. He popped up. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I know. You didn't. You just got crushed. Oh, well, the game was quick. So, so what are they going to do with their blazers? Well, it's not their blazers. What? But, but they played, though. I right? paid. <laughs> Well, I, I, Mark, Mark, no, Mark Henderson. Pay. Mark Henderson's going to quickly come in and comment and go, hmm, "Did you pay?" Loads anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, no. Um, so I've got three blazes. Two of them are going over to Mark Henderson, and I'm lending him my copy. There you go. That was my that was my home news trip. It, you is yours home news quick? Well, I was going to talk about hanging out with. Je- you know. No, that's actually really cool. What is it? I thought you actually had nothing. (laughs) Well, no, because I've... It's crazy, guys. You know what I've been doing? What? I've been playing a little game called Flesh and Oh, wait. Should we do Simons then? Because yours will actually tie in. Let's do Simons. And then we'll talk about... Talk about some real... Some real real stuff. All right, Simon. Some real questions. What about you? I have not been playing Flesh and Blood because I've been on a family holiday to Greece. Oh, whereabouts? Uh... We flew into a city called Kalamata in the southwest of Greece, about three hours southwest of Athens on the mainland. Uh, and we stayed in a little village called Krani 
on the coast and it was beautiful uh, had a lot of good food had a lot of greek lager mm. including fix mm. here vix um Vic. fix oh i thought you said like vix like vapor rub no, Vic, fix. Yeah. <laughs> um and a, and a big shout out to Yorgos Samaras, who I got in touch with on Twitter, leveraged uh, a fan mm. of the show, mm. friend of the show, uh, of the show and yeah. said, what can I do in Greece for a week down here? And he gave me so many ideas. And um, so we ended up doing a lot of those that he, he spoke to me. Oh, about. Um, were they good? So we went, pardon? Were they actually good? Or yeah, they, they were. were. So we he went... gave me so many ideas, but you know, six out of 10 was shit. <laughs> so we're, we're a bit of an active family on holiday. Like we tried to alternate like pool days, beach days and uh, culture days. So we went off yeah. and drove. We hired a car, drove a couple of hours to see ancient Olympia, which was pretty awe inspiring. Actually, it was um, mm. like two and a half thousand years old. Olympia. The site of the original Olympics. Ah, that's probably how long it will take for that deck to get good as well. Oh. There you go. That's a flesh and blood reference, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the um, podcast. <laughs> if you're still, if you're still here, yeah, if you're still here, I just, I, I, I just had to drop flesh and blood in there just to make people aware. <laughs> on our second to last day, we went to uh, a town called Pilos, which was on the other coast that, that nearby and was part of like battles in Venetian Greece. Um, but near there was a lovely beach that Yorgos recommended, and we went to see some waterfalls that Yorgos recommended as well. So it was really, really Were nice good? of him to get in touch. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, Another right. waterfall. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Does Britain have yeah. a waterfall? Yeah, we've got um, got quite a few. Do we? Like not not massive ones, but there's a few knocking about. Oh, and not, not not to take it away from other, because I, I just generally think like, oh, brilliant, Greece has got a waterfall. And then you just think, oh, how many countries have like a notable waterfall? And then it just made me think, we don't have a waterfall. Quite a, quite a few of them have waterfalls. But I do we so have much. like... Where uh, are we going with this discussion? I don't know. I just imagine there's England doesn't have a waterfall. Comment below. Tell me I'm wrong. Wales and Scotland doesn't count. I'm sure they do. Or do they? I mean, we've got the Lake District. Do they have a waterfall? They've probably got many. No, Trip, Trip is Googling. 15 waterfalls to visit in the UK. I know proper ones. Not High that. Force, County Durham. Is it a proper waterfall? Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, what do you say? Water is falling. What more do you want? Like, <laughs> yeah, but um, I could just pour water from a jug. That's not a waterfall. Yeah, exactly. English waterfall. Like, it's war from a I joke. don't know. You've got high standards, man. I think we got to move on. Yeah, we do. Anyway, sorry. I sorry, think we man. definitely need to move on. Before Thanks we... to your goss. Greece is amazing. The food was great. Well, Before we move off the UK Games Expo, yeah. I think it's just to say, like, we talked about UK Games Expo and we, sh we thought that Flesh and Blood should be at UK Games Expo. I'm, I'm thinking, like, early tens of Push the Point, like, a long time ago. Uh, like we, you know, a lot of we people were technically in the UK, there. like UK. Well, yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like a UK fab community have represented Flesh and Blood at UK Games Expo in the past unofficially. Shout out to Jason um, and some other people I can't whose names uh, can't remember such a long time ago. Adam giving East. out Ira, <laughs> Adam East, yeah, yeah, like fair play. Giving out Ira starter decks back in the day, so. It's super cool to see LSS officially support like this massive event in the UK that loads of people come over to. And I think I saw someone saying that they gave out over a thousand Ira starter decks or something crazy uh, over wow. the weekend. So, I mean, hopefully we've already had a few people in the UK Discord join. So it was really I joined cool. the Discord. So really cool. And, you know, to see it getting... Like, the, 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 the stand looks amazing. The team and the helping team there apparently worked solidly from like eight to yeah. six each day yeah they did and a lot of the team there were doing back to back to back learn to play mm -hmm. like over and over mm -hmm. again they so were incredible effort i heard from everyone involved it was a yeah, so... it was really cool you could get this ira deck and then you get this you, this sheet and if you play three different people with your ira sheet and you get you write their name down with their gem records you can then get upgrade your ira deck to a blitz deck from the mm. part of the misspell you play with three against three other different people from that in in the uh, venue with their gem ID, you write that down. Then you can upgrade that Ira deck 
into like an additional three packs. I think it's like you had to pay like a very, very That's small awesome. top. And it was like, awesome. wow, keep people playing. And the more you play, the yeah. more stuff you get. I was like, bro, this is so thought through. It's sick. It's so good. But you're, should we finish off your home news? It is flesh and blood related. I promise everyone. Trip. Well, so we had a pre-release. I went to three pre-releases for part of the Miss Vale. Mm -hmm. Back, back, back like the old days. We just go back to back to back. And and we saw a tweet on Friday night before the Darksville pre-release on Saturday. Somebody's going to turn up. And it was none other than founder of the game, James White. Trip stab. Yeah. (laughs) He was just like, you know what? I can't think of a better way to spend a sunny saturday in the united kingdom and in the finest basement in all of london and uh, you know <laughs> get me get me down to the dark sphere basement yeah there's no lose uh, you know you gotta go to the weather spoons of public lose uh there's a card limit you know you gotta spend five pounds i don't know if that's still true actually but anyway oh, but he turned up. he's selling it <laughs> uh it was the best day it was the best day so anyway we all we all turned up and we, he wasn't there. And we were like, oh, is he... He's, is he, he's, he's, tricked, he's, he's tricked you all into a pre-release. <laughs> so people being like, I, I came special. I came all the way... I came all the way down. And then he just walks in. With his... He, he, and he, you know, he's got the polo on. He's got... He had his, like... Pop collar. Pink jumper wrapped around his car. Like, he's got drip, man. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fashionable guy, James White. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah. You know, Fab's done all right through. You can tell. He's, you know, he's got the, he's got the fashion. He's, so. he's got 75 big ones. And it, you know, it's uh, it was just crazy. We, yeah, he just he just literally just walked into our part of the misspelled pre-release and like Dark Sphere. I gotta say, Dark Sphere, just to give some host of the second UK nationals. I see second UK national cheapest pre-release in London, and they gave us two participation packs for the tournament. And it's so well, like whatever you want to say about Dark Sphere, everything is so well organized. They are mm. so they are so sharp. They are so quick. They know what they're doing. Um, they know what they're doing, and like I can see David's why James such would a lovely go guy to... as well. Like he's always David is basically he's always the, at the big UK events. He makes it work, and it and it, it's always fantastic. So and yeah, he James White apparently just messaged the day the night before in the evening to David. Do you got a ticket left? <laughs> and David's like. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to come. He saw, he saw the sold out sign and went, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll buy one for you. And James, he, he was great. He was such a nice guy. Came up to came up to me and said, you know, recognized, either recognized me or recognized the push point hat. So My son. <laughs> I didn't make any of those jokes. Oh, uh, it's a good job I wasn't He was there. very nice and he was just such a chill guy and he took the time to, you know, speak, speak to me and said he might come back on the podcast, which was real nice, but he literally spent the whole time either playing Flesh and Blood or talking to people, signing cards, uh, like chatting about stuff. And he was just in great spirits. You could tell he was on holiday. You know, you could tell someone's on holiday. Mm. And like he, it, it was like, I don't know when you, when I go on holiday, I just feel like there's like a weight lifted from your shoulders and you're kind of just in like an app. Like you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to have, you're have chilling. fun. You're chilling. It, it, like he's obviously, you know, he's, he's, CEO of the game, like he's there putting on a professional face, but you could tell he was enjoying himself, mm. just like having fun. And he did a little speech at the end, which was very fun. And he gave us a uh, rainbow foil. What did he uh, say? Did he say thank, thank you, you for your money? Ha ha ha! He then... did say that, but it was it was a quite I'm good joking. speech actually. He did, he did a proper stand up and just said like thank you for supporting the game. Yeah. And we all cheered. It was great. And then yeah, it was just just classic. Yeah, gave us a legendary traverse. Rainbow Foil Traverse headpiece for, for the raffle at the end, which was run by Alex Chitu. Mm. Uh, yeah, and well, we got a gold pack, which was won by George Roger. Yeah, I know. So the two UK national champions. National champ really privilege there, yeah. 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 But we got a great photo of, uh, for me, it was a great photo because I was on top table, bizarrely. And it was me playing David Dyson. And then next to us was, I was sat next to James White and David Dyson was sat next to uh, George Roger. And I was just like, this is mad. This it is absolutely is. mad. It's, it's a bit of a weird. It's, oh, it's a bit of a go it around. A, it's a classic. Do you have Alex a Chitty, Do you have a story? I should say. Yeah, I should say the on. Alex Chitty. Yeah, uh, qu- quickly Alex throw Chitty. it in. Well, James White was playing, playing part of the misspell. I mean, James White, he, 
He makes the game, right? He knows what he's doing. A year ago, he this. made this. Uh, this, was, yeah. this. This story was told to me. Yeah, a, remember a year ago. He this made this game a year ago. Sat down next to his round world opponent, and he plays uh, He plays that card that lets you... Um, it, it's uh, Normally, it's an action aura, but you can play at instant speed. And he, Astral instant etchings? Speed, yeah, it might be that. Yeah, yeah. He, that, that, yeah. he plays it out at instant speed, and none other than Alex Kitty, UK national champion, he turns around to James White, CEO of Flesh and Blood, and he says, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> and it's like what? And it's like no, it's a you you, you that's you, that's an illegal play. <laughs> this is James White, by the way. James Can you White just turning around to James White and be like, nah, <laughs> no, you can't do that. You're t- Look, the, he, James White, are, are you telling me that James White scumming everyone out of the? Pre-mills? I'm telling you, James White. This this set came out. <laughs> he, he probably hasn't seen these cards in a year. Look, you don't have to defend a the year. guy. He made them, right? No excuse. Look, it might James, not be true. I'm, I was, I'm hearing this second hand, but oh, you're, actually, it's, yeah, just it's just rumors now. I think it's just, it's just people to people want to be hard. Anyway, anyway, he was a lovely anyway. guy, and I, and it was great. And ah. it was just it was just the perfect. Because you know, you go to a big tournament. You go to sorry, you go to a big thing like Pro Tour or Worlds if you're lucky enough to go, and you queue up and you get to like chat with James White, or you might see him walking around. You might get like a couple of seconds of his time. But there's nothing. There was I've never had an experience in Fab quite like it of just being like he's part of the game, the group. group. Like yeah. he wasn't. It didn't like he was just a me, and you could tell the guy's been playing trading card games his whole life because he just fell into the group and it was just like it was just like he was part of it didn't feel weird it was just like he was part of the community and he is part of the community mm-hmm. in many ways but it felt like but he, it was your... he could have been he yeah. could have been coming to the dark sphere armory every week for the last two years it, is, it just felt like that and he fit in so well and it's such a great experience and i like it's really cool that he goes along to tournaments and i'm sure other people get to experience at some point but you... it's just something quite like it i have to them. say I don't think anyone quite realizes how realistically one of a kind, so unique. And I don't think you'll ever get that again. Like, do you know what I mean? Because you could see James White at Pro Tour, like you said, but it's not the same. That's like well, there's five hundred people there trying to. Yeah, that's like the, that's like yeah. that's like the zoo. You know what I mean? You, you you go to the zoo, you see, you're there for the show. He goes, hello, everybody, I'm here, honk, honk. And then everyone goes, can I have my signature? But he, but imagine the animal just was in your neighborhood. You're and this didn't... is the safari. No, like, no, but like... That, the the... is the zoo and this uh, is or the Or maybe, safari. like if you even, okay, a zoo is a bad example, but like a concert, you know, if you went to see a concert and you saw the superstar that you went to go and see the gig or whatever, and they're there, you paid to see him, but all of a sudden you're in TK Maxx and they're there. And you're like... Oh, uh, that's weird. And they and they chat with you, and you're like, "Oh, that's wild!" Like that's you're never gonna get that again. I think everyone yeah. underestimated how genuinely one of a kind your experience was. So I'm super jealous, and I hate you. So let's move yeah. on to the next part: flesh and blood, literal flesh and blood. So Hamish and Trip, I, I've been away for a week, and in that week, I missed the part of Miss Vale pre-releases i didn't and missed, i didn't go either and i've missed two big competitive events on the first weekend of the release of part of the come on Simon. What have I missed? tell me about it come on Simon. have you not heard of youtube could you not just ignore your wife on holiday and watch a game <laughs> well i tried it i went to well. I went did to you actually try part... no no you didn't try. i'm not that stupid <laughs> well, I, I... I went to a part of the Miss Vale pre-release for all of you guys because I went to three. So I can talk a little bit. Let, let's just you take just a little did. Time you just did. You about... talk... No, I talked about James White. Let's talk about the set. Tell me very, trip about very the sealed quickly. experience for part of the Miss Vale. Now, isn't it isn't it amazing how I didn't even think about how I just was like it's great, and it, it never even crossed my mind that that that's that's good, like. Because I think heavy hitters kind of broke the seal of like, oh, sealed can be good. But oh, then actually, seal on seal. if we think in the past, sealed's always been a bit of a risky one. But I was just it playing been. sealed and enjoying it. And so I was like, sealed's a joke. It's great. Yeah, it's great. I don't know, but I don't, I've never played this one. You've not played it? What are you no, I said genuinely <laughs> sealed is a joke. Like, or sealed it's, sealed it's is like a, a fine it was, it was pre-release heavy thing. Hitters. And you know what it is? Eight packs. Is it? Eight packs make sealed so much better does it so much better the power level of these decks is so much higher 
And the 30 card uh, limit is so, so good. And just, Does I it love just sealed. make everything a bit more consistent. Yeah. Because you've got access to a yeah. couple more cards. And it, 30 cards is a bit of a, uh, bit of a, you know, whatever. Because actually, you you're actually putting, have to own your deck. You're putting like four to six transcend cards in, right? Yeah. And then you have your deck on top of that. So pretty much every hero is running about four to six transcend cards. And you get a transcend card in every pack. So you, you, you guarantee, in sealed, you guaranteed eight transcend cards. Mm. And then it's like, well, what the, the decks themselves are really tight in terms of the actual cards you're running. Oh, and it's so much fun. It's great. It, 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 it's, I can, I'm really interested about draft, though. I think draft is going to be like like mainly because when do you draft transcend cards that that's the the thing i'm the question i'm asking because often you leave your blues to the end but you you don't want to not have any transcend cards because otherwise you're playing with a blank hero so there's a lot of like things going on with the draft experience as well which is really interesting so i think it's a, a really interesting set from a sealed experience i think we can talk about constructed though because i think this set feels like a bit of a bomb like a good bomb in terms of the impact on the CC meta. On the power level. Which we sort of saw with heavy hitters because of mm. how strong KO was and Victor. Mm -hmm. But yep. I don't think... I think they added to the meta while this set is flipping things. Because... Does this redefine a meta? Well, it's because Illusionist, right? Illusionist just comes in and does crazy stuff. That's true. And I think we've got a really competitive aggressive deck back where before we were having a bit of a not it's not really control but these kind of like dory decks I, and these kisai <clears throat> decks and yeah go ahead Hayley, you, so uh, my assumption of this is that like heavy hitters was a good numbers deck right so yeah you, you saw the numbers but this time around um uh, part of it miss fell you see you like you said we've got a very aggressive aggro deck a very good control deck and a very and a very powerful disruptive deck mm. each of them sort of triangle meta themselves right so nu mm. doesn't want to see enigma enigma really doesn't want to see zen and zen doesn't want to see um nu so within their own set that's really good what's interesting is that they've really powered them up to actually go cool um we do that with a lot of these other heroes as well and I generally don't think that it's Enigma that's causing the problem with all the other heroes. I think that all of them are making waves with mult with all of them, if that makes sense. It's not the chain and that's it. Or Prism. You know what I mean? Like K if you looked at all the, like the heavy hitters, they the only they weren't none of the heroes were really like pushing someone out that much. Of I, I, no, strictly not true. true. It's st not strictly true because yeah, Bolton no, struggled right. against Warrior, they... but they weren't like, oh, I can't play now because Ko's here. It's like, no, you can play, but with Enigma and Nu specifically, they those two heroes turn around and go, you can't play the way you're playing because one's super controlling, one super disruptive. Zen is well, Nu just <laughs> Nu just kills blue decks like. Yeah, you, you can't play guard like you can't play a classic blue guardian like Bravo into new. It's just bad. The stuff that they can do is insane. Like they they just play all of your good cards against you, your Terra Sunders and your Macho Grandes, and they give them go again with like the daggers that they can you know they can flick knife a dagger. At you get a go again and go macho grande into macho grande kind of thing yeah it's and it's free it's free like new the new hero ability is is nuts so but then yeah enigma is just doing doing something really interesting but do you, hamish like because you've been picking up enigma yes do you feel like enigma is kind of like balanced prison like um what old prison old prison balanced old prison yeah. no i mean old prison is the stupidest illusionist ever yeah made in the history of ever and my wife playing illuminaris reminded me that that weapon mm. is broke beyond belief this the what's it what's made enigma a lot more reasonable not it's not I, and i genuinely say reasonable because it's still very oppressive if it if it gets out of hand is 
the the fact that Spectre isn't really the thing. You can no, Spectre is not a thing. Well, it is. You can. You know, you can check out our deck tech. You could make a Spectre focused Iris deck, and it's really efficient and it does work really well because of the legendary boots can put instants down at instant speed plus as well which i forgot there's an actual mystic card that says the next blue action card you play has go again so it's like right so i play this play my specter it has go again and then you can then iris swing that specter and then finish it off by playing your last specter it's like wow if prism had this it would be broken but i think uh that's the thing with enigma there's so many different ways about it but if you went down the ward path which is probably really the way you should go uh it's not like the opponent's problem and when their flesh and blood was saying or the lss was saying that it's not on the onus of the opponent to make the right call every time which it was for dromai and prism mm. It is actually the onus is on you as the Enigma player, and it really is from playing this quite a lot. Is I'm I'm trying to make the right call for what they're doing, and when mm. there's a there's a phase in the game kind of early on where you've got to be super tight, and you can't make you can't muck this up, and that's really hard. But there is a point where if you could successfully do that. And you manage to make all the right calls in that moment to keep hold of some, like, some key stuff. Or their turn wasn't very good. Man, oh man, it does feel like you run away with it because you build up and build up and build up. And then all of a sudden, you really do feel like, bro, like, I'm so, like, rich with choices that you're just overwhelmed so quickly, like so, so quickly. And a lot of that has to do with the, oh God, what's the, what's the, what's the instant that has cats on it? Margin, oh, coalescence. Oh God, the M, the majestic. Yeah. yeah, coalescence it's called. That card is white. Oh, you gain an action point. No, 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 no. So it's an instant, zero cost, uh, ward two. When it comes in, you can take all the counters from all the uh, wards, yeah. <laughs> throw it onto that, and then it has an instant remove a counter, make a spectral shield. Mm. That card is ridiculous. Plus Miragi as well. You know, um, yeah. that's an insane card. So yeah, Enigma is. Your question was: Is it a fair um, illusionist? I think it is because, genuinely speaking, I don't actually think she's walking out the gate busted. In fact, I think no. the general consensus in the UK at the minute is she's not very good she did win a battle hard in there right she did win about well she went a pro Christ plus was it a pro Christ plus yeah in canada can't remember the place but i top props to noah clark who won that well done i was watching because i'm a big you know trying to learn the enigma stuff uh the the matchups were really wild and i just sort of take that as a Look, it's day one. I don't think everyone's got misfail yeah. cards. And everyone's learning what you've got to do against this hero. So I think it was like a get... Like, you know, when they look at our first eight deck techs, we've had people question going, oh, this stuff could be so much better. Yeah, totally. It's day one deck techs. Like, that's the point. And I think this is like day one tournament. So many people are going to turn around and go, well, this is not right or this doesn't mm. see, like you know what about this what about this you know all the talashar all these top players are coming up with some other stuff yeah you're totally right you know it's day one tournament we're just people aren't going to be the uk hot. played true to true to form they did and the uk went zen well the uk uh, went actually ko <laughs> i think we had one well, sorry zen. we didn't have that many no we zens. had we had three we had UK three zens went, at uk sorry, three. the uk went aggro three zens in a 56 player tournament yeah one of them got one of them got top eight and it, the it rest of one one base. <laughs> yeah and then which yeah. one prism one azalea one zen four ko's four ko's yeah so ko showed up rightly so because ko is still really good and then the final was KO versus uh, Lila Green on KO versus uh, Jake Warburton. The Jake the Baker Warburton. Jake the Baker Warburton on Zen and Jake taking it with Zen. 
Uh, bro, Zen uh, is kind of busted. <laughs> I think it's too soon to say that no, Zen's busted. No, Zen, I think Zen's I really, think, really good. I think we good. do this every time but where the aggro deck comes to Zen, the front. Zen is the most... Okay, so Zen is the... Zen's the... Pulling ahead as... Second format. But Zen is pulling Zen ahead as the best be, aggro yeah. deck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. So let's just put it in that context. We found our aggro deck. Yeah. It, it is Zen and KO, right? Let's just, you know... It's not big... like, oh, no, no, it's a KO's KO fine. Is... No, KO's fine. I was going to say, is, are we are we saying KO is KO an aggro deck? Yes. Is 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 that a, like? Yes. I I think it's more of a like. No, he is. I don't think that those terms latch on to flesh and blood in the same way they do in other games. It's like it's an aggressive. Like, do you think KO is most, more of most an aggressive? Pro, it's a pro. <laughs> it's a proactive deck. Like I see, like Zen and Fi. If you turn and around and tell me, it's being like the super super aggro decks, but I don't. I think no, KO bro, does, like, they do. Like, it's, still, it, it's an aggressive deck. But... Swing big for ten, go again. Like Blood Rush Bellows. Uh, yeah, but I still think they. I, 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 they have I, no I, block cards. Like you know, when you look at Ninja uh, and you go, "Oh, I've got two blocks," so that effectively tells you you shouldn't really be blocking. You should be playing aggro. Like, like they have no it's, block it's, cards. What's I think that telling levels. you? I, I, I think there's levels to it. There's there's loads of heroes with no block cards. Like I, I think there's levels to it. And I, I I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die on this hill, but no. I think I think we throw things into buckets way too quickly and just be like, Well it's just yeah, an aggro. Zen, deck. Well no, Zen like, Zen is an aggro Zen deck. Zen is an aggro deck. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not arguing so, on that. Part. The reason the reason <laughs> KO is still in the game is because if you had to pick the one hero who's going to do better in the aggro race, it's going to be Zen. But the reason why KO isn't out of the race is because he's actually he's got a massive fridge of armor, which mm. technically, you know what? Zen isn't also that bad with armor either. He literally has two block, two block. Uh, he's got, yeah, he's got the headpiece as a two block, Shukos, which is a two block. His chest piece is a two block, and you get the tiger shoes. So that's a seven block armor suite, and KO, KO can deal with the disruption. This, so this is my next point. Zen's the best aggro deck. So now we've found that, people are going to go, right, so who disrupts aggro decks very well? Looking at Azalea. Looking at mm. Nu. Or Azuri Assassins. Looking at Prism, who can has some very... like People that just turn around and go, I've got Mina, Mina on hits, right? And KO is kind of a bit all right into that because he would be happy to take some blocking turns and like you said simon swing big for 10 so where's katsu or zen can't two card 10 does that make yeah. sense yeah he can't two no, card 10 all. so if if you wanted to play a game where you had to burk up a bit more that's why k is still in the race so i think the meta yeah, is starting is to good. shape up with Zen and KO as your aggro decks. Pick which one you like to tackle different things. If you don't think there's many disruption, you can go race. Get a, go play Zen. He'll kick the crap out they're of literally num- they're, everything. They're, they're numbers decks, really, aren't they? Yeah, like, they're numbers. I like I like that more as like a like a distinction. Like well, that's numbers. Like numbers always, is a, always, aggro is always numbers. You always, yeah, you, you know, it's it's numbers. It's it, and then it's like you know, you got numbers decks, you got disruptive decks, yeah. and then you've got. We kind of described it when we were talking about this. Mm-hmm. The heroes in Mist is like Zen is a numbers deck, Enigma is a control deck, and New is a disruptive deck. Yeah, like I prefer those distinctions because I think they yeah, they're they're more interesting to me in terms of like actually describing because most heroes in Flesh and Blood are are aggressive because it's a yeah. that's the nature of the game. You're essentially playing minions with charge minions with haste like when you play an attack you are playing a minion with haste that dies at the end of the turn like it and that that's the nature of flesh and blood so when you reduce it down to it's like oh it's an aggro deck it's yeah like, but well, aggro att- decks attack are... actions are aggressive like that's kind of the point of them right like that's what they are i, th- yeah. I think it's not about dying on the hill on aggro like, every every yeah. every every every, yeah. every game that turns around and says there's an aggro deck is the numbers deck it's the one that goes i'm not blocking i'm just going to go number number, number yeah number, that's, number. The, like, that's the thing isn't it yeah that, don't even look at your hands no, aggro that's yeah, a just, that's a fab concept right the, i'm not even going to look at what i've got in my hand because i'm never blocking it, right? in magic it was called red deck and you just go yeah. i i'm just going to calculate the numbers to to win and that's it yeah so so yeah, i think as so at the minute yeah the cc meta is looking like ko and um zen are the Kano. 
Oh, and K- well, Kano is Kano's K- insane. Oh no, uh, yeah, Kano is a miss. Is uh, Kindle is Bunkers. is real. Is very that's very the, real. That's the that's the that they, we we said ban Kano and they were like okay and they printed Kindle. Yeah. Like, now K- now Kano, you we I generally thought when he would came when he won Warsaw, I went well that's you know he had his run but Enigma's coming out so. GG, everyone put Kano down. And it turns out that um, Enigma doesn't really, like, it's not it's not foolproof. Like, I've played into a Kano, and I'm like, I've got all this ward. And I'm like, why do I still need to run Null Rune 3? Because this is going to go down horribly wrong if I don't <laughs> plot this. Because they can just go pink for one. I'm like, I've got a ward 3. Jesus Christ, I can't just let this stuff through so you're just losing the value right yeah that's it and if you, you can't just set up making ward all day long because they can't just combo you out because they could just do 100 damage <laughs> like, mm. you know yeah if you if you take too much if you give them too much time they'll they win can just, they'll, they'll win just yeah. Up, yeah 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 so is kano a aggro deck <clears throat> um no no, Kano's Kano. Bro. That's a great question. Is it's a com- an aggro deck. Kano's a combo deck. It's a combo deck. Yeah, it's a combo deck. If you give him time, he win. But what's making him quite distinctive is that he actually does have a. They make him first <laughs> cycle Kano decks, which is technically mm. kind of aggro ish. So you can. Well, you can you can play aggro decks as combo decks. You just don't spew out your art of war straight away you just like actually try and set something up crazy right and that's kind of a similar thing it's like when you realize it's kind of it's not quite the same but it's like when you realize you don't have to set up like that's a that's a thing with an aggro deck where you're like i could set up some bonkers combo but i don't have to because i can just kill you with this yeah and it's like it's the same with kano it's just like oh i could set up this 200 damage combo oh but actually i could just kill you right now yeah and it's turn two of the game uh, and I'm going to. Yeah, like, and I'm gonna. <laughs> and I'm gonna do it. Like, yeah. That's the kind of crazy thing is these, these are ag- they're aggressive decks, but they can also just be like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just wait then because I can just. It's kind of like that game mm-hmm. where where they reset the combo up after the first combo didn't work, and it was like that's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Kano at double level. Like, so, but it's good. Get to- Kano out of the game and in the right way. You know, let him let him have his blaze. Blaze will, of glory. I will say, so we talked you brought up we talked about Name Megma a fair bit, and we have talked about Zem. New is really New is actually quite interesting. She is falling on the category of the classic assassin, isn't she? Mm. When but weirdly in a different way. Azuri was so underrated and then became better and better and better. And everyone's like, oh hang on, I actually rate this hero. This is pretty good. And Anu's done the opposite, where everyone went, oh my god, this thing's busted. And it's actually been coming down a peg a bit. Mm. And I think somewhere, I even was just listening to Arsenal pass that even, I think it was a bit of a, I don't know, but I thought initially sounded pretty wild take from Hayden to say he thinks Azuri's better than Nui. But then I think as he was talking through, he was going, mm, no, no, actually, I don't know. He doesn't really know. But like when we were watching new play out on the spoilers, we we're like, bro, what are you going to do? This is bonkers. This is bonkers. This is broke. And then I think really snag. <laughs> I think Which, snag's just like, no, no, thank you. Snag is, you I've never seen snag be so effective in my entirety of playing this game. And I've always looked at this card going, God, I wish this could just do what it was meant to do, apart from target at the time, pummel or raise a reflex. That was against particular of like targets, and it was so like this. And is... now it's the thing. And bro, I've never felt so strong in my life when I seen that stupid. I don't even know bonds of misery or whatever. Bonds it's of called. agony. Yeah, that's it. Just a nick. Just yeah. So they go bonds of agony. Bang strike or something. I've seen some guy. Go... I had take. What's it? I had um. What's it? This round's on me, and they went okay. Bonds of agony for zero, and I had snag in my arsenal. I just went okay. Off you go. No, okay. I'm gonna do this and double nick, and then and it's got to go again. Snag. Zero. Back down to zero. And they were like, 
I think uh, Mew's going in the right direction that people won't put Snag in their lists because she's not having the well, impact. Well, okay, okay. Like, that's three cards that, or two cards that could be. But I think I think Mew. I think we'll see Mew. I think. Well, Mew I'm playing Enigma. Aspen. That's a really so great question. Snag is very. It's Snag not, works in your deck real yeah, nice. because it's a yeah. blue for zero cost. Instant. Yeah. I will play Snag, and then once I've reduced your attack to zero, <laughs> I will uh, transcend. New <laughs> is the okay. We can print a good guy. Like a we can print a you know we can print Oldham again, right? Like it's there. It's there. It's just putting that in the back pocket. Mm. It's like we can print a nice blue hero again, and it can be insane and new. New, new will sort it out. Oh, do you think new there. is like the 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 safe, yeah, that's, that's, new's they, the safety they, they sort of, valve? Yeah, it's like, and I think it's nice, clever design. Like, yeah. you know, like, we'll just have a hero that if if you know if we want to print something like Oldham again, I think they will. I think they'll print something like Oldham again. We just got new just to, just to stop things from getting too silly. I you think know? you're gonna say that, and that guy who was it um was it block out party. When he did that Starvo thing, and then you'll say, New, no, they printed New no to stop yeah. the Ice Guardian from doing his thing. They'll quote you and then go, Look how wrong everyone was. Oh, if they can do that, they <laughs> so, You know, there's no stopping them. Uh, but, like, I look, and he's got a instant play all your blue cards, right? I, I, and I think that seems pretty good against a hero that wants to play a lot of blue cards. So. I think everyone's still figuring it out. I mean, I'm listening to some of the chatter on, on Discord, and I know Discord is its own thing, or blah, blah, blah. But, like, there's there's a couple of pathways, and I don't think anyone really knows the mm. right approach yet. But she is an assassin. What's the target? And that's still true with Nu. Like, Nu is not immune to... Like she's not ad like assassins are not adaptable classes to go. Oh, I can deal with everything. It's like no, you gotta know who you're after, and you gotta put in those specific cards to get to really go for that person's strengths. And if you don't know what that is, you're just gonna kind of suck into quite a few things, and you may get lucky, and your deck pilots into a particular deck style well. But I don't think really anyone knows what that is yet. So assassins shouldn't really be looking at what to counterplay yet, but it's starting to look like KO and Zen, so maybe that's helping. Yeah, I think they like playing into. I think they can definitely play into Zen if they build themselves correctly. They have to so, build themselves correctly, but then does Zen have any counterplay? Isn't this, isn't this what we want? Heroes that can yeah be mm. quite malleable and adapt totally. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we don't want one-dimensional fi heroes who just. Well, they uh, did. Bang, they bang, made. Bang. Well, they did. They made Zen. Mm. <laughs> they literally I made a one-dimensional hero. It's it's not though. Like, is it not? It's not. It's that's not. not am, I, am I being? Am I, I being? Am I being rude? It's it. It's just like it's just your classic. Oh, it's an aggro deck, so it's one-dimensional. It's like okay, sure. If, if that's what you think. Oh, okay, fine, sure. But... I know, but you could put any card like, in, whatever, whatever. But the good, but the the actual. The best way to make that deck work approach. Yes, I can put all the flip flacks into Zen, but but know, it's just it's just it's just if you 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 just being reductive because you're just breaking it down to like oh I attack with attack cards so it's basic and it's like yeah you can say that if you like but I don't know I, like but I, that's that's flesh and blood that's the game no like, I know but I, like, it's, so, no, there is some, there is genuinely like different levels to it there is genuinely different levels and I know that you can build a Zen deck in a more defensive I mean, mid range the fact we've, we're literally already seeing multiple play ways of building Zen. So, is there? I mean, yeah, because you know, because people keep playing the fucking Bonds deck. Well, I, I mean, Bonds play, is, uh, like, uh, Bonds is, is Bond not things. hard and then, to and, see but then, is good. But then the winning deck from UK Games Expo was completely different to that Bonds Was it? Deck. It was boring. Yeah, it was no non offense to Jake the Baker. It was basically, you know, good, good solid attack action cards. But I was, think, was there no know, Bonds? We, we've uh, right. There might have been a, a cheeky red one in there. No, Why not, no mate? Bonds. It wasn't uh, nine bonds. I, I just don't think it's fair to say, like, oh, this deck that contains nine bonds of agony and nine uh, descendant gust wave is the same as this other deck that contains, like, no, know, I know, I know, but that's so, it, good stuff. But it is, but yeah. I think, no, I think, I think Zen is like we, I've, I, I've said this. It's which an is, I do, I do think that Zen was a, a little bit of a missed opportunity in terms of like, 
where they could have taken ninja because they literally have a hero called zen but they still built the hero in a way that is just katsu is katsu's hero ability off transcend right with a bonus right which is a shame like i would have liked to have seen more play into zen state tokens and but it, why? Why is it the tiger hero, Hamish? No, no, I, I, I'm just, I, like, I why, agree. When, uh, why did it need when, to be the tiger? I agree. Yeah, like exactly. Why did it need to be the tiger? Uh, but I, I think maybe like, they could have taken it in a different direction. They could have so. just not. I tell you what they should did, should have done. They shouldn't have called him Zen. If they didn't yeah. call him Zen and called him, <laughs> they wouldn't have got our hopes up. Yeah. yeah, like if they they could make a Zen that uses Zen state, mm. but they made they could have called him, I don't know, Tiger Man. Uh, what's it? Tiger King. I don't know. Where's Some... the female ninja as well? Like, what's up with that, guys? Come on. Where's the female ninja? I mean, Ira. You mean Ira? Yeah, I know. Bring her back, mate. Bring her back. She's dead. Ira would have made, would have made a great, great tiger. But she's ninja. dead, Trip. I don't know. I think I think Zen is more interesting than Fi. Did you know that Zen was meant to be... Statement. Did you know that yeah. Zen was meant to be Benji? I did not know that. Yeah. Really? True. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, uh, so, uh, mm. in the LSS dev, Bet... Zen was meant to be adult Benji, but the reason yeah. he wasn't was because of Spring Tidings. Yeah, that sounds Spring Tidings. <laughs> spring Tidings in CC is a massive problem. Plus, as can well, you imagine Tiger, 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 Spring Tidings? If this hits draw like five card, four cards, or whatever. Yeah, that's it, right? It's every card of less than two base power on the stat on the chain. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, so. Yeah. That, plus as well they thought it was a bit like um the creative team was not like it, it just wasn't like it doesn't it fit didn't, with didn't fit, no so they made but I, I think zen is i think zen is potentially the best deck in the format but i also think that it, they they took it like i don't i don't mind like it's going to be a fun deck to play and you know we we've said this before like a great you know proactive decks are fun like people like to play their cards people like to play the cards they own like, they yeah. like to be able to do these cool turns and yeah and renaming cards is fun and these like crazy bonds yeah. turns are fun but i'm really interested to see what ends up being the build for zen like, so well that's the thing is the build excited yeah. that our next podcast is going to be the week of nationals the week before, oh God. the week before nationals. I yeah, think. like Don't, our. Well, I am excited. Because our I... next podcast is released the day that nationals begins. Right? Oh. Yeah, Friday, right? That's really cool. That's gonna be crazy. Okay, so, so in oh, the next two weeks, yeah, are we gonna all change our minds? Gonna develop. <laughs> yeah, how much are we gonna change our minds in the next two weeks? Well, like, do we think uh... that the UK is gonna stick to form and go agro, 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 ko zen? Well, I think you know what the what the UK meta needs to do is yeah. they need to learn how to draft mist because day one is six rounds of draft is as it, it is every year. It's three rounds of CC, six rounds of draft. So if you can't draft, it doesn't matter what hero you put you you, you sleeved up that morning. Not monarch this time. At least it's not monarch. Yeah, yeah like that's that, this is the thing about Nats is that we we talk so much about CC and don't yeah. know, CC's we're, pretty fun. We're, we're pretty, not pretty, and it's pretty fun to talk about. But we're and not then very you get to day one of Nats, and it's like I know, uh, I know. Want to draft? But we talk about CCs because that's around. what we can talk about. Because I don't think yeah. like our, 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 okay. how confident Snap are you in hole. draft? All right, go on. Snap Snap hole. Yeah. yeah, I've done one draft. Which hero is going to win Nats? Zen. Hey, no. Oh, uh, I, I actually don't. I I don't take Ooh. that. I don't take that away. I, Zen or yeah. Kano is legit. I think Kano might win it. Azalea. Oh, um, no. But fair, fair. Who's go, who's going to be piloting that Azalea? Ooh. Oh. One of the one of the Sammy, one maybe. of no no Sammy Braven's on Kano. <laughs> I think Kano might win it. I genuinely uh, think. I think. That's I think the, yeah, it's interesting. Kano's mad. Kano was mad before, and then they gave them. Keep your they eye. Gave them a cantrip. If right, you're gonna so. watch the UK games, at, like the the UK nationals, you gotta keep your eye on what Matt Foltz, Jamie Faulkner, Francesco, Rob Catton, and what they kind of all fall on. That and I put George Roger in there, but George Roger, I know it's just going to play Zen. Let's be let's be real. Yeah, but, yeah. But whatever they kind of fall on, they're the ones that are really happy to play the best deck in the format. They're not like us that will go and fall on 
kind of the comfort pick like yeah. not not the heroes yeah, yeah. but the strategy is the comfort pick they'll, like they'll put the time in and practice reps yeah in like to just get the deck sorted out they will take the best what they feel is the best deck you never know i wouldn't be surprised if some of them pick ko but i if you see what they are gonna take is like all right they might have figured something out but then then again every now and then they do go hmm we think this is the best deck and then i don't know they get sometimes they get blown out you know but we'll see i i don't don't disagree with any of those takes i think all three of three of us have picked well the potential it's two weeks it's three weeks away two weeks until we record the next podcast and then we'll record it a week before nationals start so if you are going to uk nationals do mm-hmm. try and find us. We will be playing. We will be playing this year. Whatever the Americans play, um, <laughs> it's what's yeah. going to happen. Let's be I'll real. Be <laughs> um, Who won the UK Nats? I think we're wrapping up, right, lads? We so are. Think, yeah, we are. This has been another fantastic episode. I really like uh, Krabby. If you do say so yourself. Really like Krabby's, dude. Yeah. I really like this beer, this uh, Luna Haze. It has Beatown literally do, do it, good beer. It literally says Elephant Trademark. I don't know why. Right, Simon, send us off. Guys, see you in two weeks' time, ready for Go Dance. See ya. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.